Hey, hey, what's going on my ASVAB party people? Anderson here, your ASVAB coach. And in this video, we're gonna be going over word knowledge. We got three main things we're gonna be going over, like how to learn new words and not memorize them. Number two, prefixes, suffixes, and root words. And lastly, guessing strategies. Because we all know that sometimes we're gonna have to take a guess, so I'm gonna show you how to do that the right way. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. All right, so part one, learning new words. Let's go ahead and chat about this real quick, my party people. So when it comes to learning new words, I know a lot of people tend to go ahead and they try to memorize simple words and, and all these words that they come across, but they don't actually truly understand those words. So here's the difference. When you try to memorize something, just think to yourself, when I try to memorize something, typically what happens is, well, I might forget it in a day or two unless I'm really using it, right? But let me go ahead and fixate on that unless I'm actually using it. And so what I wanna start off with here is we need to actually learn the words through understanding how they're used, not just memorizing some flashcard, but actually learning. So these are the three steps you should always follow to learn any new word. I can promise you right now, if you take your time to learn the words like this, you're gonna slowly but surely expand that vocabulary and give yourself the best shot to pass. So step number one, when you encounter any new word, step one is gonna be defining it. Can I define it? What does this word mean? And that's the step that a lot of people take when they're practicing, right? That's common sense. If I'm learning words, gotta know what they mean. But number two here though, number two, well, do I know any other words that mean the same thing? Or synonyms? What are synonyms? What are the synonyms of this word? You need to understand not only what the word means, but what other words mean the same thing? Because think about it, on the word knowledge, typically the question is formatted as, this word most nearly means, and then they give you a list of other words. So think about it. You're gonna have to go ahead here and learn more words that mean the same thing. That's gonna help you identify those words. Long story short, first, define the word. Next, hey, what are synonyms? What are other words that mean the same thing? But lastly, this is where you truly expand your vocabulary. It's putting it to work, putting your knowledge to good use here by using that word in a sentence, two sentences, or more. And so if you follow these three steps when it comes to learning new words, I can promise you right now, you are truly going to expand your vocabulary as opposed to trying to memorize some list of words hoping for the best, all right? And so with that said, let's go ahead and let's talk about prefixes, suffixes, and root words. So, you know, these things are a pretty common thing in the English language and they're gonna appear plenty, plenty, plenty of times. Now, if you ask me, your biggest focus for the word knowledge is gonna be focusing on common words. Now, common words can have prefixes in them, root words, suffixes, of course. But the reason that I say study common words, I don't mean words that, oh, everybody should know, not what I'm talking about. What I mean is we need to be taking a look at the words that appear in culture pretty frequently. So if there's a word that you've seen today in a news article or somewhere that you are like, okay, I've, I recognize that word, but I'm not totally sure what it means, that counts as a common word. Again, common doesn't mean common to you, it means common in our culture. Does this word appear frequently in culture? We're probably gonna wanna learn it. So focus on those common words, and in those common words, you will find, again, prefixes, suffixes, and root words. So let's go ahead and go through some of these basic common ones, but I'm gonna leave it up to you to find more and keep learning those easy ones. Really, really quick, my ASVAB party people. While we continue this video, if you're enjoying it, which at this point, if you're watching, I know you are, please remember to like this video, comment your favorite part, and subscribe to the channel. That way you can help us spread the word about helping people raise their ASVAB scores just like we are. Let's keep getting the job done. Let's get back to the video. Appreciate you. So, starting off here with a prefix. A prefix is basically an attachment at the beginning of the word. So if we look at some common prefixes here, we're gonna go ahead and have re, un, pre, dis, im, non, miss. And obviously by themselves, they don't look like they make a lot of sense, right? But I can tell you right now, there are plenty of words that use those prefixes. Let's just go ahead and start with re. Okay, let's talk about reopen. How about that? That's a word, right? So what does the word or the prefix re mean? Well, the word open means, well, open to basically make something ajar. And then reopen means do it again, open the door again. And so the prefix re means again. And when you look at un, 
that means the opposite. So you can say, I'm impressed or I'm unimpressed. Again, un is a negation. It basically turns everything off that's right in front of it or it gives you the opposite feel. When you're looking at pre, the prefix pre means beforehand. And so I see the, I think you're starting to see that a lot of words use the word pre, like prepare or uh, premonition, things like that. And so what we want to do here is understand these prefixes, understand suffixes, understand root words. And so I'm not going to get too, too, too into it in this video. I will expand upon this in another one, but you want to make sure you understand what the definitions of these prefixes, suffixes, and root words are, because plenty of words can be derived from them. All right. And so with that said, let's go ahead and go to our next part here, guessing strategies. Because at the end of the day, let's think about it. Are we always going to know the answer? Are we always going to have it right there, understanding exactly what it is? No. And sometimes we're going to take a guess. And on the ASVAB, given that you have four choices and you don't get penalized for getting a question wrong, you might as well know how to guess. And so let's go ahead and take a look at guessing strategies here. And it's going to involve prefix, suffixes, and root words. So the first try here is again, go ahead. If you can, if you see any, do you see any prefixes? Do you see any suffixes? Do you see any root words that you know belong there, that you know have a definition in that word? And then beyond that, ask yourself, you know, if you can't identify those prefix, suffixes, and root words, ask yourself, honestly, have you heard of the word before? If so, when have you heard it? Like, what was the context? You know, if you're thinking about some random word, you know, like, let's just go ahead and say, you know, let's go ahead and say abysmal. You know, some word that, you know, not many people have heard of. Some have for sure. A lot of people have actually. But when you think about the word abysmal, you can try to think about the context you heard it in. So if I'm thinking abysmal, where have I heard abysmal? You can think of it as, oh man, you know, this, uh, this meeting, you know, the, what we talked about in this meeting, all the content there, and it was a complete waste of time. This was so abysmal. And even if you don't know what the word means right at the gate, you can get a feel for the word because abysmal sounds like a pretty negative word, right? And so if one of the answer choices involved a negative leaning word, then you might want to pick that. You might want to. And so number three here, when it comes to sentence questions, you got to make sure you are well equipped to take a guess if you need to. And here are two ways that you can actually do that. One is by ignoring the word. A lot of people get hung up on trying to go ahead and read the word and pronounce the word and, you know, just try to do some gymnastics with it. Hey, look, if you don't know the word at all and you can't identify any prefix, suffixes, and root words and you can't remember where it's from, don't even try to pronounce it. Go ahead, read around the word in the sentence because a lot of the times you'll be able to get the feel for that word. You will absolutely be able to get the feel for the word. And then when you look at the answer choices, give yourself that best shot there by plugging in some of those answer choices for that word and see if it still fits that context, if it still fits that situation. So don't worry, we're gonna be practicing plenty here. We're gonna get plenty of practice. So let's just go ahead, move forward here and look at an example. So portable, most nearly means what? So when you think of the word portable, even if you didn't know what it means, you gotta ask yourself this. I know that the suffix able, right over here, able means able to be something, right? It has the capacity for something. But then when you think about the prefix port or the root word port, you may be looking at that and saying, hey, port, basically you can think about that like portable, porting, porter. Uh, yeah, someone who is, you know, something that's carrying something, a carrier. So when you think of port a bowl, you're basically saying this is able to be carried because if the word port to port something means to carry something, then portable means it's able to be carried. And so because of that, you can look at the answer choices here, A through D, and you're looking at movable like, yeah, that's pretty much it. And it absolutely is. It absolutely is. And so with that said, let's go ahead and look at an example without a sentence again. Oh, well, here are the answers actually. And so we have A, it's movable. And here's something that I want you to do moving forward. One thing I definitely want you to do here is make sure that you try to define the word every single time. After every practice problem, define the word. Here, portable means easily carried or moved. And then the root word port means to carry. And so once you have that down, then give yourself some synonyms, try to use it in a sentence or two. You don't need to write it down always, but it does help. 
So with that, let's go ahead and take a look at a sentence example. Let's go. So the sentence reads, the downsizing will require several hapless layoffs. Hapless most nearly means what? So when you go ahead and look at the word hapless, you may be thinking, okay, I don't know what it means. What can we do? And that's fair. And that's fair. But I did notice that there is a suffix in hapless. When I look at the word hapless, I see that the suffix less is at the end. And less pretty much means without. Without. And I know a lot of people might want to look at the prefix or the root word hap and think like happy, right? Or successful or kind of like, you know, lucky and stuff like that. That's fair to say. So if you think about it that way, when you think about hap less, so less meaning without it, that sounds like it's saying without happiness or without luck or without success. That's a good way to think about it. Another way you can look at it, don't read the word hapless. If you're struggling with that, don't read it. Just read around it. Okay, the downsizing will require several blank layoffs. Okay, then let's go ahead and try to plug in some words and see if that works. Again, you have about 30 seconds to do this. And so it's very, very, very important that you pick a strategy and you go for it. So here, okay, the downsizing will require several clumsy layoffs. Mm, I don't think that the layoffs are gonna be accidental. So I don't think that that fits. I don't like that word. B, the downsizing will require several crafty layoffs. Crafty? Hmm. I don't think layoffs are crafty. Um, maybe if you mean like, you know, being strategized and things like that, maybe that might fit, maybe, but I don't see it quite yet. So I'm not gonna really dismiss this answer yet. Let me go to C first. Okay, the downsizing will require several alert layoffs. Doesn't make sense at all to me, nope. And when I look at D, the downsizing will require several unlucky layoffs. That is the winner for me right there. Yeah, if we have to downsize the company and we gotta get rid of people, some of these people are gonna be unlucky. And for me, that's it right there. I look at the answers. Yep, D is it. And the definition of hapless means out of luck or without luck or unfortunate. And if you look at both of those words, unfortunate. Prefix meaning un, not fortunate, so not fortunate or hapless. And so I hope you're starting to see the, 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 the use of this, really. Using these strategies, if you need to guess, making sure that even beyond the practice, you're still learning these words, you gotta give yourself the best shot of success here. And so moving forward now, I want you to try some of these problems here. I want you to try some out. So I'm gonna give you a count of five seconds to pause the video. That way you can try it out and you know you can pause it and then I'll keep going forward. So I want you to try this first one. Here we go. And before we continue this video, my ASVAB party people, I think we already expressed it, we already showed it, it's so important to practice these strategies the right way. And we make that super easy in our ASVAB All Access program because in it, you get our Word Knowledge Bootcamp. So with every single problem that you practice in that bootcamp, you're gonna be shown the definition of the word and it's gonna be used in a sentence. That way, you can truly understand every single word that you're going through as opposed to just having to just say, okay, I'm right, I'm wrong, and move on without truly growing. We want you to grow from every single problem so you can lower that test anxiety and truly feel confident about test day coming up. And so go ahead, click the link in the description of this video to see how the full program works and how we also cover paragraph comprehension, math, and everything else with lessons, with guided practice, with worksheets and speed drills and everything you need to ace the ASVAB at the end of the day. I'll let you check that out when you get a chance, but let's get back to the video and let's keep crushing word knowledge. So substitution most nearly means what? Okay, substitution most nearly means what? When you think about substitution, think about a root word that you might see in there, like substitute. The word substitute, what does that mean? I think we've a lot of us have heard this one before. It means to replace, right? I'm gonna substitute myself in for my teammate, I'm gonna use a, a, a meat substitute for my burger. You know, you can think about it so many different ways, but at the end of the day, substitution basically means replacement. And oh, now that we look at the answers, there it is right there. And so again, I know this one was a pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward one. 
And whenever you get the chance, again, think about where you've heard that word before, how you recognize that word, any images that come to your head, and then pick the answer that's appropriate. Because the answer is C, replacement. And so the definition of substitution is exchange or swap or replace. And so here, in a sentence, again, helping you learn all three different ways, in a sentence, there wasn't any more sour cream, so we used Greek yogurt as a substitution. There you go. Talking about cooking, replacing ingredients when you need to. So let's go ahead and try this next one out. I'm gonna give you five seconds again, starting right now. Census time. Let's get to it. So give your task card to the assessor at the end of your tour and they will tell you if you pass. So give your card to your assessor. Okay, that's the word we wanna look at. Assessor most nearly means what? Give your task card to the assessor at the end of your tour and he'll tell you if you pass. Okay, so this sounds like this person has authority, this person has power, this person's pretty much telling you if you can proceed or not with whatever they're talking about. So, even if you didn't hear the word, uh, even if you haven't heard the word assessor in your life, let's check it out. Anchor, ancestor, auditor, or amateur. Okay, looking at these answer choices, I don't think it's gonna be anchor. Give your task card to the anchor at the end of your tour. Doesn't make too much sense. Give your task card to the ancestor. No. Give your task card to the auditor. What does an auditor do? Well, if you haven't heard of the word audit before, auditing, auditor, audits, basically an audit is basically like a, a review of something. Basically reviewing something, typically it's gonna be in business. You're auditing a certain process or procedure making sure that the numbers line up. That's what an auditor does, someone who basically checks for accuracy. And so someone who is an assessor or assessing something, isn't that someone who is similarly checking, engaging if things match up? If uh, you know this person is up to the task of success and to move forward, I would say so, I would say so. And then the last one here being amateur, that doesn't fit either. Give your task card to the amateur I'm gonna let an amateur tell me if I can proceed or not. That doesn't make too much sense either, right? And so with that, I want you to try out this next one after we go over the answer here. The answer is C, auditor. Definition being a person who evaluates quality. Yeah, that's an auditor. That is an assessor, absolutely. And in a sentence, the assessor will measure if we qualify to compete in the next set of games. Booyah, sounds good. And so with that, let's go ahead and go to number three here. I'm gonna give you a shot. Three, two, try it out. Let's go. All right, so lackadaisical most nearly means what? Okay, lackadaisical. Okay, so when I look at the word lackadaisical, again, if you've heard the word before and you know the definition, then you know the answer. But let's go ahead and say that we didn't know it. Have we ever heard the word before? Lackadaisical. I've heard of people giving lackadaisical effort. And what does that sound like? Hmm. Well, are there any prefixes, suffixes, or root words that we can really point out real quick? Uh, yeah, for sure. The prefix lack, right here. The prefix lack means without. Okay, I may not be sure about what a daisical means. I, maybe I don't know, maybe I don't know. But I know that the word lack, the prefix lack, means without. Okay, so if I connect that with where I may have heard that word before, if I have, lackadaisical effort, if I'm giving lackadaisical effort, basically it sounds like I'm giving, I'm not giving effort actually. I'm not putting in passion. And so when I look at the words here, which one seems like it would fit the most? Marvelous? No, that's not without wonder, that's full of wonder. That's not gonna make sense. Unconfined, so without confinement. Possible there, right, possible. Uninterested, the prefix un, again, without interest and then restrained, so being, again, confined. And so not gonna be D and not gonna be A from my understanding so far. The prefix lack means without, and because of my understanding of that prefix, I've narrowed it down to two possible answers. So I think it's a lot easier to say, hey, I like my odds with two answer choices and not four, right? Exactly. And so the answer here is gonna be C, uninterested, because the word lackadaisical means unenthusiastic or half-hearted. And so write that down, you gotta learn these words. And so in a sentence, 
Leo was bored and gave lackadaisical grunts and replies. There's number three. Let's go ahead and try out number four here. Let's go. Getting a little harder now. Let's go ahead and get to it. So, I like to cash all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them sometimes. So I like to blank all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them sometimes. You saw what I just did there? I, again, I ignored the word. I wish that would have worked the first time. And so I'm gonna go ahead and ignore that word. And let me go ahead and just kind of say, hey, let's fill that in. I don't wanna see it. So this is a valid strategy. Reading around the word will give you a nice feel for what might go in there. And then you can use the answer choices to plug and play. So here we go. I like to blank all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them sometimes. So if I'm gonna be revisiting something, I think it's fair to say that I have kept it. So I like to keep all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them sometimes. That means, that makes a lot of sense to me, at least, right? And sometimes you wanna trust your instinct there. You wanna give yourself the shot to trust your instinct. And so looking at that, cash most nearly means seize, hmm. I like to seize all my tickets, okay. I like to accumulate all my tickets and stubs. I like to honor all my tickets and stubs. I like to interchange all my tickets and stubs. Okay, I can tell you right now that I don't like D at all. I'm not interchanging my tickets, I'm keeping them. Um, I don't, I'm not honoring them, um, I'm revisiting them. Yeah, maybe I'm keeping them for other purposes besides honoring. I don't know if honor fits perfectly well there. But then I'm looking at A and B. I like to take, so, so seize, to, or seizure of something, you're taking, typically forcefully. I like to seize, I like to, I like to take all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them. Or I like to accumulate. I like to gather all my tickets and stubs to shows and revisit them sometimes. So if I had to take a guess, if I'm running out of time, I'm going with B. I'm going with B. My answer here, I really, really, really like accumulate. And when we check it out here, yeah, the answer is B. It's going to be accumulate. So let's go ahead and check things out here. The word accumulate or the word cash means hoard or store. A lot of us have, a, well, everybody who uses a computer has a cache in their browser. That cache saves information that's relevant to how you've been using the internet. And so a cache is essentially an accumulation. And again, I mean the same thing there. And so looking at it in a sentence, Fernando seemed to cache all his cigarette butts in his cup holder and never anywhere else. So he seems to accumulate his cigarette butts in that cup holder and not anywhere else. And so let's go ahead and move forward into number five. Let's go ahead and get started here. Three, two, try it out. Remember minds by party people, the word knowledge a lot of the time is feels like a game of chance no matter how much you study. And so practicing the right way, learning your prefixes and getting to a point where you're not nervous about looking at a problem that you don't know, but being able to use those strategies the right way, that's the goal. So remember, you can achieve that in our program because our program gives you every which way to practice with recorded lessons, with our Word Knowledge Bootcamp, and everything else, including paragraph comprehension, math, and practice tests and questions to help you succeed. So go ahead and take a look at the link in the description of this video because this program, I can promise you right now, take a look at it because you'll see that you can go ahead and raise your score without spending much money at all. And that's our goal. So go ahead, get in there, check it out. And that way we can raise our scores at the end of the day and get that job you deserve. Let's get back to work here, but don't forget, check out the program to see what it's all about. Let's try it out here. So the word intrigue most nearly means what? So intrigue most nearly means what? Let's think about that. So intrigue, hmm. We may be thinking about hmm, intriguing, right? You may be thinking of, oh man, I have this really intriguing idea. It sounds like we're saying interesting, right? Hmm. So let's see which one of these might fit the best. Enigma, hmm, origin, conspiracy, or entrapment. So this is one of those situations where, hey, if we knew the word, we'd have an easier time, right? But we thought of the word interesting or like an idea, right? And when we think about intrigue, again, intriguing, ideas, interesting, which one of these sounds like it's even close to an idea or even close to uh, interesting or something being thought out, a conspiracy. 
It's a conspiracy. And this one's definitely a reach. Definitely a reach, right? You know, uh, the word intrigue means plotting or planning. So when you think about the actual definition of the word intrigue, it's actually not too far off. Because a conspiracy is basically like a plan, but it's typically regarded in a more negative light. Like, oh, a conspiracy to murder or a conspiracy to overthrow the government or something like that. So a conspiracy is typically taken in a negative light where intrigue is pretty much just like, no, you know, something that's interesting, something that's, you know, an idea that's there. And so, yeah, they are similar in the sense of their definitions, but not in their emotional context. But that's okay because you're always, again, trying to find the nearest definition. And there we have it. And so, in a sentence, what lies behind the wall is nothing but intrigue for those wicked enough. All right, let's go ahead and try out number six, last one. But before we get to that, I gotta talk to you about an additional strategy for learning new words. And so, when I ask a lot of people, and because you're you know, up to this part of the video, I wanna give you a treat. Every problem that you do is not just one problem. Every problem that you do is five words. Not just one, you have five words that you can learn from. The word itself, let me go back over here to show you the word itself, and you're gonna have the four answer choices available. So you have five total words that you can learn from. And guess what? You're gonna be able to define each and every one of those words. You're gonna take the time to actually give synonyms for each one of those words. And you're actually, as well, going to use them in a sentence. More than one, at least two, at least two. That's again, how you can really slowly but surely keep learning every time you practice. You have five words in every practice problem. Honestly, you might even have 10 words, 15 words, if you think about the synonyms and the antonyms and the opposite meanings. Again, do that little bit of extra effort, provide that little bit of extra effort, and you will be rewarded dearly. I promise you. So let's go ahead and go to number six here. Three, two, one, final one. Let's go. Let's go. So. As much as I wanted to hire my sister, I needed to find someone less inept to the job. Okay, so again, we're looking for the definition of the word inept. All right, so as much as I wanted to hire my sister, I needed to find someone less inept to the job. So there's a prefix here, right here, right here, right here. It is in, in, I-N. The prefix in, think about it. If I, see, if I think of the word sufficient versus insufficient, Sufficient means like this will satisfy. Insufficient means that this doesn't satisfy. And so with that said, the prefix in means not. And so when we're talking about, as much as I wanted to hire my sister, I needed to find someone less not able to do the job, maybe? Because the thing is, you want someone more able. So someone less bad, because the prefix in, again, it's a negative. So we want someone less bad to the job. So which of these sounds like it's gonna be talking about being unqualified or someone who is not able to do something? Well, let's go. Uncontented, baffling, internal, and crude. Now, this is an example of a harder, of a harder sentence that you're gonna be dealing with. The answer here is gonna be crude, but the reason being, the word inept means, again, it is not up to the task. It's unskillful, incompetent, or clumsy. That's what inept means. You are not apt for the job. And so when you think of the word crude, the word crude means unrefined. It is in its original state. It's not yet ready for distribution. And so when we think about it that way, yes, these two are the best match out of all of these words here. Uncontented, so not happy. Mm. Baffling or confusing or surprising. Internal. Well, it says he wanted to hire his sister, so that really wouldn't make sense either. Internal sounds like it would fit, but no. You want some, you want to hire your sister, but you want someone less internal. Um, but you want someone that's internal, right? So it's like, okay, it doesn't really make too much sense. And so the word crude here makes the most sense. And in a sentence, we did not realize how inept the director's daughter would be when she joined our team. And there it is, my party people. There it is. In the recap, I gotta make sure you know this stuff here. Remember, learn new words, these three steps, follow them, follow them, follow them. Define the word, find the synonyms, the similar words, and use it in a sentence every single time. Without fail, I promise you it'll work over time. Next, ask yourself if you heard the word before. 
try to identify the context. You have 30 seconds per question. Give yourself that shot of trying to recognize those words. And then try to identify prefixes, suffixes, and root words. I'll leave that to you to continue building your list of prefixes and suffixes, and that way you know those definitions when you run into them. And lastly, remember to tackle sentence questions by trying to read around the word, plugging in answer choices if you don't immediately know what the word means. Remember, learn all the words while you practice, every single time. Once you're done with one practice, again, give yourself that chance to learn every single one of those words, build some synonyms, build those antonyms. That way, again, you can expand and truthfully, genuinely learn. And so, at the end of the day, I'm your ASVAB coach, Anderson. If you have any questions or want to let me know what your favorite part of this video was, go ahead, let me know, comment on it. I'm always happy to see how you're learning. And so, if you have any questions at all, go ahead and let me know. I'm here to help you ace the ASVAB by part of people, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers. And so we both know this video just helped you with your test anxiety by just a little bit. And to keep lowering your test anxiety and keep raising your confidence, that's what my ASVAB All Access program is for. The link's right up here. Click it, watch the video on how it works, and you'll see exactly why thousands of my students have raised their scores and gotten the jobs they want. So click there, watch the video, and sign up to raise your score. I'll see you soon.